Lucy Wilde Hair, or The Case of the Tarred Pillow, by Anna Maria Murphy. There's little point in us silly girls brushing our hair. Sometimes we comb it with goose fat, but it doesn't last. The sand sticks to it all shells, and we resemble small granite boulders. Sometimes I have found small fish. How we envy those mainland girls with their sleek, shiny hair that knows its place. Their ringlets bouncing softly, tendrils framing their delicate faces. Those mainland girls do not resemble gorse bushes like we. Are we jealous? Yes, we are. But we have a certain way with strangers. We know them instantly. The way they bend in the wind. The lack of sea in their eyes. But I reckon the sillies men had it worse. You see, there was more of them than us. Not enough to go round. So they was forced to go to the mainland. Silly's men have a sideways look. This is due to the wind blowing from the east. Those Penzance girls wouldn't look at a storm-haired island man. So once, when a ship bled oil onto the islands, taking the flight from birds and choking our fish, the men of St Martin scraped the black from the granite and used it to tame their hair. And that is what brings me to my story. I have a book of things I have found washed up. The skull of an elephant, a motorbike, chrome-plated, encrusted with barnacles, a trunk of silk slippers, 40 flippers, left foot, a heart with all the tubes attached. Most things found was posted up in the town hall, and if not claimed, the finder could keep them. I did not report the heart, although I wondered who might have claimed it. Here's another thing I found washed up. A shipwrecked man. We found him kissing the sand at Hell Bay. We girls was walking to the annual general meeting of the All Islands Hairdressing Club, which was due to take place at Fran Penders. We were struck by the beauty of the man's bare back, especially Fran, who knew about those things. It was the colour of amber crab shells, burned brown on the white shore, if you can imagine. His hair was as wild as a sea anemone, and the salt had made a map of his skin. We was used to human debris, but usually the sea washed away features. I was awful calling Jack of the Carpenter to have him measured up for a coffin. But Fran couldn't resist having a closer look. Christ, there's foam at his mouth, still coming out. She was right. Like froth on beer it was. We turned him over, his eyes were looking up towards the top of his skull. We pumped the sea out of him like a sinking boat, He coughed up all sorts. Shrimp, minnow, cockle. And then he uttered something we couldn't catch and sank down into the sand. I'm telling you now, I ain't ever seen such a beautiful man as that. Even though, like I said, his hair was as wild as Samson. Jack of the Carpenter's cart was called for and he was took off to Doc Abbott's house. We held our annual general meeting but could not concentrate. On the agenda was... Item one, minutes of last meeting. Item two, apologies. Sorry. Item three, Mrs Ladner's new haircut. Did we like it or not? A vote was taken. Item four, merits of Paddock's new hair stiffener. Didn't work in hard rain. It turned to glue, as I found out, when Wayne Sage tried to run his hands through it. Item five, merits of piled up hairstyles. It was decided that most island girls couldn't get away with it, except on calm days, those from St Mary's. We then looked at hairstyles from magazines brought over from Penzance. It did us no good, and only served to increase our hatred of mainland girls, who have no idea how we suffer. These are our hair club nicknames. There's me, Lucy Wildhair. Fran, Heather Head Pender. Mary, Mouse Ears, Harvey. Henny, Mad Frizz, Fudge. Sorrel, Seaboil, Libby. The meeting finished early. We all lied about why. We all wanted to slide beneath our sheets and think of that dark, salty man. Including me. Next day, I got up at what I thought was a very early hour. 
I was sure Doc Abbott needed some fresh eggs, but I wasn't the first to arrive. I was there with the cabbage. I had a couple of pilchard. I had honey. Although it was well known that the doctor's wife hated fish and wouldn't have it in the house. Hello, Fran, Mary, Henny, Sorrel, says I. Hello, Lucy. What brings you here? Same thing as you, I spect. Ladies, what can I do for you? We give him our stuff. Then we stand awkward for some time. How's Mrs Abbott? Oh, you know, still hates fish and, um... We stood there, the five of us girls, each of us knowing that if there had been only one, we might have been invited in. And, and how is that shipwrecked man? Oh, now him. Well, he's made a good recovery. Lucky you found him, or he would have been another customer for Jacka, eh? And make a good recovery he did. He was from Brittany, and he spoke in their tongue. Not the Frenchy tongue, but the Brittany tongue. He made himself very handy to Brittany, man. He went from island to island, repairing things, and sometimes breaking others. See, he knew what each of us needed. Not like the island boys who were too busy watching the skies. Henny Fudge from St Martin's was as weird as fish. Her mind was troubled by bird flight and cloud over the moon and the thought of people she would never meet but wished to. Her thoughts were bigger than her island, and this troubled her, like her brambly hair. Brittany man would tell me of the world and soothe me with foreign songs. He stroked my head till I closed my eyes and slept on his lap, and he would whisper his longings into my ear and promised to show me mountains, fountains, palaces and peacocks. And so she was his. Sorrel Libby always had her hand over her mouth when she spoke, so it was hard to know what she was saying. You may not believe it, but I kissed him till my mouth was sore and talked to him till my throat was raw. Mary Harvey had hands like cooked lobster, pink and red as summer sunset and rough as sea urchins. She stunk of fish from gutting on the quay and nothing could rid her of the smell. Brittany man held my hands as if they were kittens. He infused them with heather and dabbed the back of my neck. So I smelt of moor and mountain and forest. Fran Pender. With her hair the colour of cream, she's broken every man's heart on the islands. But with their granite feet and wobbly sea legs, none of them could dance. As much grace as a boiled crab, she'd say. Brittany man, waltz me till I swooned with his strange music. Now she is lost, like all the others. And as for me, Lucy Wildhair, he writes me letters. They are in his tongue, but I don't care. Me, who is starved of words, who knows a hundred words for sea, but none for music. And so... I am lost too. The All Islands Hairdressing Club has disbanded. Of course, the island men have took against him. I should have been suspicious when Wrecker Wallace befriended him. He takes him to a pub called The Wink. They're all full up on the drink. He tells Brittany Man of the beauty of Penzance girls. Christ, man, they're lovely. Hair as flat as a mill pool. Skin like moss. Then Wrecker takes out a jar of tar. Try this on that hair. Mainland girls don't like a wild-haired man. Brittany man takes the jar and shakes his hand, his head full of Penzance girls and their flat hair. Next time I receive a letter, it has a black thumbprint on it. Next time I see Brittany man, his hair is as flat as a fillet. Did I tell you how beautiful he was? How his eyes took you all in. How his skin was as cool as mother of pearl. I know I did. There is a phenomenon on these islands. There is no peg strong enough to hold down our washing in a storm. And storms can break here quicker than a wish. So, on a windless day, when our lines are full, it has been said that if a wind was called, these islands would all sail away. And so it was on this day. On all the pillow slips of all the women in the All Island Hairdressing Club, there was a black mark, a black tarry mark that we could not remove. Sometime later, 
A boat was seen, leaving in the blackness of the night. Our shipwrecked man was gone. After a time, we looked again to our island boys and saw the sea in their eyes and thought that maybe that was not such a bad thing. More time later, when the tarry stains on our pillows had turned grey with washing, I walked along the beach with my book, found another heart, but dared not wonder whose it was. Johnny, come over the water and make the sun shine through. Johnny, come over the water and paint the sky with blue. Cover the fields and the meadows with flowers of red and gold. And cover with leaves the simple trees that stand so bare and cold. Johnny, come over the water, turn the white grass to hay. It's winter, winter all the year Since you went away Since you went away Johnny, come over the water Johnny, come over the water And make the sun shine through Johnny, come over the water And paint the sky with blue And paint the sky with blue Johnny, come over 